This is Record Royale, where we throw two albums into the ring with one another and see which one comes out on top. Doing. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> We're good. here for another episode of the pod. Uh, should start off by saying no Bradley tonight. He's got his first big uh, trial shift at the ship in in Ooh. town. It's a little trendy little. I swear it's like a secret bar. Unless I'm getting it mixed like up. A, sounds like a pirates pub. Oh no, I'm getting <laughs> it mixed in. up with another one. The ship in. It's in yeah in the mall there. Pretty nice little spot. That'd be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll talk to him next week if we got it. <laughs> So it's me, it's Adam, and it's a couple of lads from Sydney band Highline, Reese and James. Woo-hoo. Thanks for coming Woo-hoo. on the show, guys. Hey, thank How you, you doing? Thank you. Good. Thanks for having good. us. Fantastic. Thank you. Going Thanks well. for having us. Been been chatting uh, all things Liam Gallagher before before the old recording because Very we're much doing so. we're doing DMAs, and you know instantly everyone just goes to Oasis from there. Up against Tame Impala. Uh, before we get into the the little track, so congrats on the release of your latest EP. Last Cheers. month. Yeah. yeah thank, Sick. thank you very much. Thank Finally you. out. Actually, it was recorded like this time last year. So True. Well, yeah, because well, you say finally out, but didn't you guys release an EP in 2020 as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. February 2020, but... Right. I mean, yeah, we sort yeah. of released it. I guess we released it. But <laughs> <laughs> That's like it, a pretty it, quick turnaround there. Did you like plan to do that or just like happen to well, have these new songs? Oh, well, lockdown. Know, but, yeah. Just the first EP was like kind of very... I don't know. It wasn't really thought well after in terms of how it was going to be released or prom- in fact yeah. I, there really wasn't any promotion besides just social media. Just put it out there, pretty much. A few stories on Instagram. Yeah, and most yeah. of the songs I think of the new EP were kind of playing by that point anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. so they're already there. Yeah, so. yeah, it was already sort of existing. We were just arrogant, thinking we're not releasing this till we get picked up by Sony or oh, something. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was like <laughs> what the first one. Oh. oh, we were like, yeah, Definitely we had no first. idea how anything worked. <laughs> like, yeah. <it> like, <laughs> we just didn't know what was going on at the time. And you look back Being picked like, up by Sony oh, would be geez. crazy. You're like, oh, jeez, we <laughs> suck. That's like, what we thought. <laughs> was that like, your first release, the EP in February of last year? Oh, we'd released a few singles. Um, yeah. So those singles were coming out as of August 2019. So that was a bit of a carryover from 2019. Yeah. So, yeah right yeah, yeah. That was I that saw song. how are the runner shows you did for the EP recently yeah they were good yeah they, um, they were pretty good were they headline? like your, were they like your first you know standing full capacity normal type of show no yeah, true. Um, well they weren't all full capacity like Oxford Art Factory was capped at about 40% or something oh okay right anyway so we did an earlier run yeah. in April and did Oxford Arts and then came back last week and did Mary's Underground in Sydney. Then we nice. went to Newcastle for the first time. Mm. Did uh, the Warehouse Cambridge. Oh, yeah. the Cambridge. That, um, that, that place is great. Good but venue. But we played the like main shit. room, holy Yeah, shit. the main room is like, we went to the main room after after we played. <laughs> did you play, on, <laughs> did you play <laughs> on a Sunday night? Oh, we played, we no, played it was Saturday, Saturday night. night. I think it still um, goes off on a Saturday. It's pretty yeah. crazy it was, in there, isn't it? When we there walked was in, we were just like, what is going yeah. on? Cambridge <laughs> has kind of turned into a nightclub. It was, it yeah. it was, defi- like it was definitely a nightclub in the main room. It was, yeah. it was like, Since like, COVID, I feel like, because there was no gigs, they just started like, I don't know, but they still weren't allowed to have people. I don't know how they did it, but... Yeah, well, it's you and I played the night before every night. in the main room, so it's like a big contrast and we walk in and it's like, you know, yeah. pop, yeah. which does, you know, slap it. A lot yeah, of they've time. been but starting to do <laughs> full on like nightclub three nights of the week there now because everyone yeah. goes there. It goes off every time. Well, it's well, there's two things there because there was like sweat on the windows. So <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we the were like, we got to go. Yeah. Let's just go to a pub. And then we left it and we asked someone, like, where should we go now? <laughs> They're like, yeah. what do you mean? <laughs> back, in, back in there. You're at the place. <laughs> That's it. That's, That's it. it. Where, are you, yeah. where are you going? <laughs> oh, shit. We're like, so just, we just had no idea. And we ended up wandering around Newcastle trying to find a ke- kebab it's shop. It's kind of like a shit now. spot, too. Yeah. Yeah. The Cambo. I There's get the like impression it's not there. There's two roads where there's yeah. pubs. The Beaumont Street and Derby Street. And it's not really... Well, it's kind of near Hamilton. It's like but in the middle of both of them. If you didn't know... Yeah, <laughs> we had no idea. Just yeah. end up on the highway, basically. Yeah. 
We went to the Maccas. They didn't let us in. <laughs> they did. Oh, yeah, that's they a very did. dangerous Maccas. They didn't Maccas, let us in. Really? Yeah. There are a lot of fights there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Not anymore. Not as much anymore. They used to. I used to work at that Maccas, King Street McDonald's. Across the road is King Street Hotel, which is like another nightclub. Oh, Owned right. by the same people. So everyone oh. just wanders over to that Maccas after, after yep. their night out. And bashes each other. At the club. It's beautiful. <laughs> Did you? I saw you guys play with Cooks and Bakers, didn't you? On the yeah, couple twice. Of yeah, we did. They were really um, good. They were, they were really good. They've been they've been kicking it for a while now. They they were yeah. super young when they started. I remember we we were still playing shows and um, they were just coming up. How 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 they go? Were, were you guys were they supporting you? We supported. You or? No, we supported them twice. Um, they are so talented. It's yeah, they're crazy. Pretty, yeah, they pretty are. Because hey. we saw them up in Newcastle and they had like their full crowd like belting out every song and we we're like, okay, this is really cool. Mm. let's see how they go like in an away crowd and like where we can sort of really listen to it and then we came back um to waywoods and we we're like oh fuck it's like it's just like just, just no good. matter where they went it was just completely like awesome that's like they, they, that's they, were, they were really good to watch um yeah they were, they were really good especially in the newcastle crowd it was it was really cool that that came by a little side room yeah uh, it goes off if, if we're like a local band that can bring in yeah. a crowd yeah yeah the crowd's insane there. Yeah, yeah I think really everyone's good. just been pretty keen to go back to shows, and that's like pretty much the only venue. I shouldn't say that, but there's no a lasso, way. isn't there? The, the last, last mate, the, the hammer. La- yeah, but You're getting some hidden gems. It's there, the buddy. Be- it's the best spot. The last is, is a close second. It's pretty good, but, but it's a drop off after that. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I was going to ask Tame Impala and DMA is they tend to weave their way into uh, the influences of a few modern, a few, a lot of uh, modern. Australian indie rock bands are you guys the same do they, do they play a big part in your songwriting I think DMA is more so than Tame Impala yeah we sure. just we don't uh, have Tame Impala is very <laughs> sort of know, it's almost like the opposite of what we're doing to be honest Tame Impala yeah. is a massive like Reese and I are huge fans and like it's the kind of yeah. thing you would you would try to weave in but sort of gets a bit know, hard I guess curtailed <laughs> or sort of falls flat on its feet or, you know quite yeah quite quite early on whereas dma is a, is a pretty obvious sort of um you know that comes up all the time in, in questions and that's the kind of thing that is definitely a very obvious influence but tame yeah. impala has been one you know was one of the first sort of alternative bands i sort of really got into so it's definitely a sort of i don't know like a musical influence but not really reflected in the band so yeah. to speak both of these albums are very um They've got very obvious influences as well. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, DMAs. Yeah. They they've both put, kind of deviated since. But I remember when this DMAs album came out, every single person said it was just Oasis. It was still good, but people were like, yeah, you're kind of wearing Oasis pretty close. Yeah. And then Tame Impala was the same. Everyone just said this is just the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> wearing it really close. I mean, I was listening to Re- Re- Revolver the other day, and I was like, fuck, it sounds so much like in a speaker or like the other yeah, way, the other way yeah. around, to be honest. Big but, time. Yeah. yeah. Not but, that it's a bad thing, but... No, yeah. no, it's great. It's another yeah. similarity. Mm. Yeah. No, no, it's really, it's really good. Let's uh, let's smash through the little facts of these two. So, Tame Impala is the project of Perth, Perth, sir, uh, Kevin Parker. The debut studio album released on the 21st of May, 2010 by Modular Records. Um, we've mentioned them before. They put out the Avalanches since I left you. Also, Cut Copy, Eskimo Joe. Uh, Dave Fridman, who mixed MGMT Little Dark Age, mixed this. I think we mentioned that when we did that album as well. Yeah, so we I remember did. Brad bringing that up. Uh, four singles, Solitude is Bliss, Lucid, Lucidity. I can't, Lucidity. I, can't, I, can't, I can't pronounce that word. Almost. Expectation and Why Won't You Make Up Your Mind. Picked at four in Australia, 144 in the UK. It won the J Award for Album of the Year that year and also the Rolling Stone Awards for Album mm. of the Year. Wow. It was nominated for Album of the Year, Best Rock Album, Best Cover Art at the 2010 Arias. Okay, 2010 Arias, who won Album of the Year? Trivia. Anyone 20, know? 2010. Oh. I, was, I was 10 years old. So was I. Uh, yeah. same age. <laughs> 20, <laughs> 10, 2010. Was it like Cut Cobby? No. I'm guessing <laughs> I want to err on the side of like a sort of a straight like a guy Sebastian or a Tim O'Matic kind of thing <laughs> Tim O'Matic <laughs> I wish <laughs> Tim O'Matic yeah. that's what I'm, it's 2010 uh, that's what I'm thinking like that that okay. sort of I don't even get five seconds to have a uh, I don't know Angus Kimmy. Julia Stone oh. Oh. 
yeah. yeah. Big Jet Plane. Big Jet Plane was on the album that, that year, yeah, yeah. down the way. Also, they lost to Birds of Tokyo, self-titled for Rock Album of the Year. Mm-hmm. Good wow. album. Probably not as good as this, though. Uh, DMAs, Australian three-piece, formed in Sydney, 2012. Thomas O'Dell's vocalist, Matthew Mason, guitar, lead guitar. Johnny Took, Akui, the Akui guitar. Uh, <laughs> debut studio album as well, released on the 26th of February, 2016, by IOU Records. First time mentioning them, I'm pretty sure, somehow. We haven't done wow. Violence of Her. We haven't done Dizzy Death Rays. Wow. Probably will get done eventually. Produced by Dylan Adams, uh, as well as alongside the band, but he's worked with uh, West Theberton, Sticky Fingers as well. Five singles, Lay Down, Too Soon, In The Moment, Timeless, Step Up The Morphine. Uh, Delete was on... They, did, they had an EP out before this, hey, and Delete yeah. was on that. Yeah. yeah. They had a few. Yeah. Delete they played it. out, and So We Know. Yeah, we're all on the... Um EP. EP. Oh, so we know it came out as a single right after the EP, but it's still sort of similar. Yeah. Era. Yeah. True. Era of the uh, Peaked at eight in Australia and 36 in the UK. Their most recent <laughs> album, The Glow, got to number four in the UK. Just fucking mental. Wow. Yeah. 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 It, it, number one in Scotland. <laughs> wow. That is crazy. Yeah. I, I remember seeing videos of them. Um, I don't know if it was, it might, it would have had to have been before The Glow because it was before the pandemic but they were playing in England and the show the crowds were just huge like yeah, yeah. I saw the set where they played Transmit which is like you know the big one yeah. in Scotland and the crowd is like insane like I think they're playing before someone like a big like the Kooks or, or maybe Catfish the Bottleman like a big big English band and their crowd yeah. is like ri- like ridiculous like just any looks like anything better than they get here to be that's sick yeah I wonder if they like the England crowds and even like the England music media kind of say this is an Australian current oasis or do you reckon they just like... Yeah, they do. Do they? Because, yeah, um, I'm pretty sure they told Noel Gallagher that um, they told him in an interview. I remember saying, I think NME did it and they were like, this band sounds like you and he hadn't <laughs> ever heard of them and he oh. just like... <laughs> write them off <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna boo DMAs yeah he's just like fuck yeah. them they suck <laughs> and then like a week later he was like I actually listened to them they were really good <laughs> <laughs> well they toured with, toured with Liam in the last like UK summer I think or yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah they, they did, did. Winter. so like that's obviously a very you know close sort of holding that one to their chest yeah I would say that's so but good I reckon there's definitely that element of of that I think I think Reese even when we had this conversation like maybe a while ago and Reese was like oh there might be some element of like people trying to relive the Oasis like hype <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely could be yeah for sure yeah mm. they're all a lot of the fans because we're in like Facebook groups <laughs> oh, yeah. of DMA's fans <laughs> DMA, DMA, yeah. and they're like 35 with two kids so <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're probably like 18 and doing whatever back mm. in the 90s <laughs> Well, I've got my maths wrong there, but... <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Close yeah. enough. Uh, let, let's smash through the little elements here. Did, uh, did this Tame Impala album kind of like pave the way for King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard and bands like yeah. that? Yeah. Like but completely? Yeah. Did it bring yeah. like... Oh, I don't think it paved album? the way. Yeah, but like did it like bring... Were they the first, I don't know, Australian yeah. band to kind of do this sound? They, Definitely. They got big because of... um. Every rapper just sampled this album and the <laughs> next album. Was it um? Oh, what's the? Is it the ASAP Rocky song? Is it yeah. Sundress samples. Yeah. Why and what you make? Travis Scott has yeah. sampled them. Like every rapper, yeah. just started sampling them, so it got massive. I, I find and then it interesting. everyone was like, Australia is just a giant psych scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, one yeah. big sort of band kind of cracks it, which is yeah. interesting because it doesn't sound very commercial that album, but then did really well commercially no yeah and even lonerism did really well lonerism is even weirder as well but Mm. at times so which is like very very sort of interesting yeah that's good the riffs on it are like Jimi hendrix riffs (laughs) a lot of i reckon they're they're very like george harrison yeah again the beatles comparison (laughs) but in like the best way yeah i get those zeppony stuff as well yeah kind of from it it's definitely that sort of 60s 70s Blues rock cycle. it's pretty like it's pretty flawless i would say in trying to recreate that sort of sound from the 60s especially like the drums and stuff yeah like yeah 
how like i don't think i've heard anyone else do that outside of like the 60s or 70s that has recreated that sort of sound pretty well, perfectly well there's that whole thing they um like purposely recorded the drums old school yeah, yeah. they, they use like a like, different top mic or something yeah. they that's why that the pingy snare. like snare drum yeah. sound yeah. heaps of resonance like very distinctive mm. sort of and that's the thing i sort of when i was listening to this record sort of again recently is like the drums stick out so, so much more the symbols are yeah. so prominent that yeah. makes yeah. sense about the mics that they did that because the symbols are just like it's like wash over you <laughs> in yeah. a good way though heaps I good kind way. of puts yeah. you in a trance oh big, yeah absolutely. The, the, whole, drums? the whole album does <laughs> like yeah big delay on everything the big i don't know what pedal is it on the guitars is it flanger is it flanger probably everything the, <laughs> the airplane yeah. Yeah. Pedal. oh yeah, yeah that one yeah. <laughs> that's on kind of like when, when he does when he plays like the riff so they're kind of gritty though like the tone on mm. it's pretty dirty a lot of fuzz towards yeah. the back half of the album yeah like bowl arrow of time that yeah that um goes from that sort of like clean bluesy sound into that like you know <laughs> shit sound effects though <laughs> i don't know it's like a very clear sort of blues rock yeah sort of tone i know brad you guys are a fan of the direction that they ended up going in no yeah I, really I I, it's different you know and i i don't know it depends it's a it's a, the thing it's because it's so different you, i think a lot of people tend to like love one hate the other and vice mm. versa when did currents come out was that 2016 maybe 20... Is 17? Yeah, that was 16. Oh, There's a massive gap no, between the slow rush and... 2015. Yeah, maybe... Like oh, was it? Anyway, um, I listened to that heaps when it came out, but it just didn't age well with me. And then since then, I can only listen to Inner Speaker and Lonerism. Mm. Really? Yeah, I like... I still like Currents a lot. I definitely think it's... it's um. I don't know. I, I don't listen to Currents beginning to end and have the same appreciation that I have for the first two albums. Um, yeah. But I still, like, really, really... And there's some massive tracks on that. But I think you got to look past the sort of... What, you know, the two big, you know, Summer Man and... Um, the big tracks, Let it, yeah. and Let Let it Happen's happen. good. Yeah. Mm. No, sorry, Let It Happen is good. I mean, uh, Lesser Know the Better. Oh, there's yeah. There's, like, yeah. one that yeah. I don't really yeah. find myself yeah. coming back to, but then... You mean the you mean the best song of the decade? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I remember remember that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that was my joke. I could have seen that one because they just put out he just put out the last album as well. I think when Mm. that was sort of being discussed. I still reckon. Mm. I think I I probably put Lonerism over this still. Yeah, 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 I would as well. I'd also put for now DMAs over um, Kills Enders as well. I'd say. Yeah. Is that the yeah. second, most recent second, one? No, second the second one. one. Yeah. Probably, yeah, I'm probably the same. Just because it is, it like has started to get away from that wearing their influences on their sleeve so heavily. Yeah. Like starting to become their, like what they'll be remembered for really. Yeah. I, um, f- I feel like Inner Speaker was finding their sound and then Lonerism's a bit more poppy, but it's like solidifying that sound. Yeah. And the same yeah. for Hills End and For Now. Um, it's and poppy, they... but it's also more experimental, I would say. Yeah. It's like trying to find um, different sounds. There's definitely like, like just... Keep On Lying, I think, is on Lonerism. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like the voices in the background. Yeah. And it just goes crazy. There's some weird crazy shit. Crazy at the end. <laughs> yeah. <there's laughs> some... But um, yeah. Nah, but this, this album's still so good. It's definitely like it, but it's kind of the bare bones, I would say, of, of Tame of Parlor. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it definitely has he... a homegrown sort of. It's before he found like. Since. Yeah, since, too, yeah. <laughs> too many since. Yeah. Before I, I, he got money to buy them all. There was like an article on it. He's like, oh, I just, we, I, I think it's like he started buying them as a joke. Like with his house, it's like, oh, I'm going to make all this corny pop music. And then just, <laughs> then just did. <laughs> did, <laughs> did like two albums of it. Yeah, and, yeah which is interesting. I know I know. Brad's seen Tame Impala live. Have you guys as well? Yeah, I, yeah. S- I saw him. Yeah. I saw him. I saw him in 2019 at Splendor. Yeah, that's where Brad saw him too. Yeah, was that it? was insane. That was yeah. really, really good. I saw him 2015 um, at the Opera House. Oh, oh, that would have been the best gig. <laughs> yeah, it was really quiet though because of all the noise restrictions. Um, yeah. So it was weird. You could like hear everyone next to you while, I don't know. Oh, that's heaps weird. While Let It Happen <laughs> and Apocalypse Dreams are playing. Big songs, And yeah. you can hear the person next to you being like, yeah, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, that, that is suck. weird. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was pretty mad. Though. Yeah, I still maintain it's the the twenty nineteen Splendor show was one of the best, it was probably the best show I've ever seen. And I saw a couple I've... good ones that year. I saw Prodigy earlier in the year. That was really cool. Um, well, but I remember there was like so much hype around it. Like they put out the first two, he put out the first two singles of the Slow Rush, and then yeah. did that. Like remember watching like the Glastonbury set from what would have been a month before. And yeah, it was like crazy. the lighting was just like ridiculous. That year and the year before, they just played every single festival in the world. Yeah, just yeah, same like. place. Coachella were they headlining at Coachella? Yeah, they headlined Coachella. That was <laughs> that was <laughs> so yeah. insane. It'll like a band, a, like you listen to an like Australian band does that again. You listen <laughs> yeah. to Inner Speaker and go like, yeah, this band will headline Coachella. Yeah, <laughs> bookended Pretty by like jump. I I don't know like Ariana Grande, I think. Yeah. And, like that just is, sort of an interesting combo. They would have had some crazy supports as well. I want to look at that. <laughs> uh, in the do, yeah, didn't MGMT? Is... Yeah, they, no, they're supposed to yeah. in, in Mexico. Oh, there I you think go. MGMT oh, and Tame Impala in a bill. That's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Are DMA still like a three piece? Do they still record just the three of them? Uh it's it's interesting. I think they've always always recorded with, with like six of them or so. Um, but just for the image, it's like three of them and there's three songwriters. Yeah, okay. But yeah. you you check like the credits and there's always like six or seven people. Yeah. Well, they it's have the a full-time sort of drummer and, and bass player who yeah. just, just does, I guess, everything with them. But yeah. they also have heaps of, if you look at the credits, like heaps of cameos from other musicians. Paddy Cornwall. Paddy Cornwall com- yeah. comes up heaps, like all over. Yeah. I think all of them, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, so he played, played bass on this, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, on like a lot of them. Yeah. So I think it's like it's hard to sort of I think get a band that's sort of to that point being just a three piece like strictly a, just three people recording. Yeah. Someone's especially play when drums. <laughs> especially when one of them sings and two of them play guitar. Yeah, exactly. A few key instruments in that one there. <laughs> just not much. <laughs> the al- yeah. it, I think this is the first time I've ever listened to the whole album, but because pretty much every song's been a single, I was like, oh yeah, I know this song. I know this song as well. Yeah. It's pretty. It 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 slaps in that right. Like it, it just keeps going with hits and hits. I don't know if mm. it's as like contextually strong as uh no, in a speaker, but they're definitely like pretty like pretty standard structures and stuff, which is still good. Yeah, they're yeah. definitely like yeah your your pop structures. I but think I think, I think that's probably big hooks. Like their debut album, they were pretty go like getting pretty big. They were probably just like let's get an album out. Let's oh, put yeah. these 12 songs together. doesn't matter if they're all singles, essentially. Yeah. They, well, I, they've never not written a single. Yeah. I think there's like As in it's always attempts. been gone for that attempt at just going full blown. There's like one specific song where I'm like, all right, that's the first time you've tried not to do a single um, off the glow called Learning Alive. Yeah. And I then they, Blown Away is not... They released it as a single. So. It's like the one track I go like, that just doesn't really sort of stand out as anything as energet- energetic. As, yeah. as the others it's everything else is just like <laughs> pretty yeah pretty flat out it's mm. pop rock it's it is yeah. yeah yeah. but yeah I mean it's not like a knock it's just no no <laughs> no no it's no, yeah, it's yeah. just very different to Inner Speaker yeah yeah yeah, to, uh, yeah the whole sort of I guess rationale I think behind these two albums was very contextually sort of you look at compare two bands that started and I think ended up doing stuff that's quite like you listen to the glow now it's quite yeah, different to what different. that was and they'll both sort of recorded you know not with the same sort of budget that they would mm. certainly be doing now mm. I think is sort of interesting to see how they moved away both of them from that original influence yeah would these be two like Australia's two biggest bands that's what like, I was trying to think but like in a worldwide Taylor is e- I don't perspective. say easily the, the biggest I don't think they DMAs are the biggest a... but who would be second up would probably be them uh, well, I mean, it, they, mean like once upon a bands? time but then you got like Spacey current, current bands massive. not like ones that are still touring from a thousand years ago oh. <laughs> they're not going up against ACDC but <laughs> I used to think it was Gang of Youths because they did massive runs off the back of that last album yeah but they did they just toured with Mumford and Sons. Yeah. <laughs> when they went overseas. Yeah. It was like, but DMAs are like... They're probably the biggest international appeal. Yeah. I mean, just international just being in the UK, but that's a big, mm. big market. But 
I don't know, in terms of domestic, you'd probably say Spacey Jane are the biggest at the moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah here. Too. For sure. Yeah, mm. here, definitely. I don't really know any other band that's sort of... King Gears, maybe? Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. No, we're back that's a bit, bit more voice. cult. Maybe we are a psych rock country. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. After all. <laughs> yeah. How, right. did, how did King Gizzard go overseas? They're big in... Massive. Yeah? Yeah, they are. Yeah, but they it's, sold it's out like shows cult, all over it's America. Like thing, though. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, they're, they're quite big in the in the States. You always think, how do they actually work tours overseas? Because there's always like f- two more albums they've released by the time they've done a tour. I think that's why they're big. Because they just can't... Like, you can't actually... I mean, they're good. They're obviously so good, but you, you can't get away from them. Yeah. <laughs> they're just going to keep material. hitting you with releases until they get big and... Then they did, <laughs> and now they don't. That one care. year they put five albums out. They just got that massive. Was, yeah, yeah, that was. Crazy. I still just haven't worked through it. The stuff with King is I just don't, just really just don't like. But there's yeah. some of, I just listen to like that's awesome. Like some of the best. That's stuff the best I've thing heard. about it. Yeah, yeah, which is like I think there's something there for everyone. Yeah. Like, how many albums have they put out now? Oh, Six seven, million. Seventeen. <laughs> oh, I think. I saw them. Be over ten. <laughs> that's, yeah. I that's saw crazy. them at. Um, a festival I don't know if you've heard of it called Gumball Festival it's like no, 40 no. minutes from Newey it's not like a big festival but I saw them in like 2012 probably like a festival oh. like a camping festival for I don't know a few thousand people if that probably like a thousand two thousand and I no idea who they were we watched them because their name was crazy and it was at <laughs> night and they fucking went off and we were like that was sick not gonna, know, they- not gonna know who they are then, Did they have two drummers back then? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've that never was like, seen I think that, was only, that only stopped like last year as well. Mm. Yeah, because I remember seeing that. All the way through. And I was just like, I've never seen this shit. I'd only been like 15. I've never seen that shit before. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Why is there so many people <laughs> on stage? I want to get yeah. up there. <laughs> it was such a small festival. You probably could have walked up there and no one would have kicked you off. It would have been yeah. I mean, when, you, when you're that small, how do you get away with telling people you're going to have two drums? Oh, like, like the sound dude would not the sound dude would, would just look it, at you yeah. and be like fuck really you're taking it's an extra piss. six like, microphones you better be good dude <laughs> set it up yourself yeah <laughs> I'm not yeah. micing you up yeah. <laughs> have you got a sound guy <laughs> well they yeah. were they are so good they probably did like get away with it yeah. yeah but yeah imagine them playing like a shitty little pub and they walk in with two drummers <laughs> it's a small stage yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's uh yeah, and, and 10 vocal my friends please yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's get into the segments i reckon yeah let's, let's do kick it. it off with uh Oop. get inked get inked now adam you're gonna start we're gonna make some tattoo designs from these albums we got what have you gone with this all right one? for uh for Tame Impala um, from Solitude is Bliss there's a party in my head and no one is invited um, I was just thinking a picture of like a cartoon picture of Kevin Parker and on in his head it's just like a heap of clones of Kevin Parker's like <laughs> open up in his brain with like little party hats on and oh, I'd have just because Kevin Parker's not really he doesn't seem like a party guy so no, I think no, they would just be standing there no with party hats so a head a <laughs> um, forehead tattoo yeah it'd be a, it'd be on my forehead as well <laughs> Okay, that's good. It'll be Kevin Parker on my forehead and it'll be of his forehead. Um, (laughs) And then (laughs) my idea for the DMAs one was just step up in morphine. I just thought it'd be cool to have like a a drip bag on your shoulder, maybe. (laughs) It's a bit dark. (laughs) And the the line goes all the way down to your (laughs) veins. veins. Yeah, and then it might say step up the morphine in it. Pretty shit. There you go. (laughs) That's the point, isn't it? That's what this game's all about. Shit tatters. I've taken my tattoos from the exact same thing. Solitude is bliss. There's a party in my head, but no one is invited, and no one is invited. My idea completely different. Um, I was just thinking the scene from The Simpsons where it's like a flashback, and young Homer Simpson isn't allowed into the No Homers Club. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. But instead, the sign reads "Only Kevin's Club," and Kevin Parker is <laughs> the one turning Homer away. So it's just that scene, but with Kevin Parker in there. That's pretty um, good. Shout out! That's one. That's one for all the Simpsons uh, lovers out there. Also, step up the morphine from DMAs. Losing expression, facing the autumn. Step up the morphine. Just thinking, the singer of DMAs in like a big hospital gown, and he's like attached to just like a, like a drip. walking drip. Yeah, and like some autumn leaves on the ground to go with. The that's line. pretty good. Yes. 
there's yeah. mine all right which one of you want to go first yeah i i also had a soul choose bliss tattoo <laughs> okay <laughs> um um so same mine was one. same lyric <laughs> <laughs> and everything so um i had it's like a chess piece and it's it's like a like a, a head when the, the head is like four heads hollowed out kind of like a like a third eye looking sort of thing oh, yeah. inside is like a set of decks and like some lights but just no one's on the dance floor yeah nice yeah. and then <laughs> and, um, and then for hills end i had off um i think it was uh you tried to avoid um in the moment Step up the morphe. in the moment <laughs> no, um, yeah. off in the moment and he's like uh you try to avoid love and it's a a um tattoo of tommy sort of playing football is he lo- you know loves football and everything and yep. then and then trying to tackle him is a love heart like with football boots on and everything like trying to get the ball off him and tommy's <laughs> kind of avoiding like the love heart oh jeez not to get and that's like on your forearm oh, that's good <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome it seems more like Did anyone a, just hear that ship noise yeah was that you was that a, yeah <laughs> that was a great new ship, ship noise just newy ship it was a rumbler that. yeah i was rumbled my room yeah what the fuck i was like <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out I to newish ship noises. I didn't hear it, yeah. Might be the squeaky chairs. I think my ears really? are a bit more um, inclined to hearing ship noises. Uh, <laughs> the, the best thing about living in Newcastle. Yeah, hearing ship, all the time. ship noises. <laughs> Newcastle Port. Ah, uh, Newcastle Port. <laughs> <laughs> go, go follow newish ship noises on Facebook. Good page. The wheel created. <laughs> ne- uh, I didn't create it, but I... Well, yeah. I Do you get some it. interesting ship noises? Like some... You know, Great ones. Sometimes. Yeah. It's always Every day. Different. Oh, yeah, that page... <laughs> fucking went off i need i need <laughs> to get that right will, will has a main page about him <laughs> yeah we did a run of t-shirts 130 t-shirts oh. <laughs> it was insane it, it, it was we gave the money to charity though so i reckon a lot of people bought it for that oh, yeah that's yeah what, what, to, what was like the design of the, uh to, have you ever ship. heard of the the yeah it's just a ship but it was pretty much the pasha bulker if you ever heard of that what happened in newy like <laughs> 14 years ago oh, well I thought everyone knew about Pasha Bolka no no one does that's why when I think of Pasha Bolka like uh, former uh, metal band, band everyone would be like what the fuck is your name But was that like yeah. an oil ship or an oil it was a big ship that got stuck on the land got stuck on Nobby's <laughs> beach from a big flood stuck oh, like a week that sucks yeah oh, uh, it was like a tourist ship. attraction most newy thing ever classic <laughs> <laughs> best thing that ever happened in Newcastle yeah after your uh, night out at the Cambridge. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, is that a so ship? Good. Can't be. <laughs> yep. Oh, it is. Look fine. it up. It's a great sight to behold. <laughs> um, I, I, I got so sidetracked then, I can't remember if we finished the tattoos. Ah, no, right. Yeah, I got no, we go. didn't. All right. So, I was thinking for Inner Speaker, Alter Ego, it's a uh, two-piece work on either calf. Um, <laughs> and it's like the two sides of Kevin Parker's face. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, sort of like a Harvey Dent sort of... Oh, yeah. nah, that's good. And if you got big enough calves, you can squish them together. <laughs> oh, so I put it on one calf, I consolidate it. Well, if you've got, if you got, you can squeeze your calves to. Oh, yeah. right. So it's like a dy- it's dynamic. You can yeah. yeah. Can anyway, that and good. um, can't believe no one went for delete with with oh, uh, yeah. Hills End. Just don't delete my baby, and it's a half erased baby. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the womb, or like? A- <laughs> uh, I mean, I, that's up to you. I mean, by his you, of you the put tattoo. like an eraser there, or would it be like a scribbled in, out? like with a like look like it's a graphite pencil kind of thing, or or like a kind of legit looking baby? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> up to the artist, up, I up guess. <laughs> More the personal <laughs> <wants to laughs> the interpretation. Half a baby. <laughs> we'll go half. That's a baby. good. Half a yeah. baby. That's genius. Simple. It was so. It was. It was there for the taking. I'm glad yeah. someone. It was. Me. Let's do the ad. All right, we are going to make some tattoo. No, we already did that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was reading the track listing here to see which songs I'm going to do, and I was thinking about my tattoos still. We're adding songs to our playlist. Favorite songs from each album. Reese, you can go first. Um. Hills End, my favourite song is Play It Out, the last one. Last track. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, just listen to it. It's good. Um, track. And off Inner Speaker, it's got to be Runway Houses, City Clouds, which is, I think, Lost the it. second last track. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just love that as well. 
Yeah, big, off. Yeah, off uh, hill. Yeah, hill. it's great. Hills end. I keep flip flopping. Like the answer I told Reese yesterday was just not the one today. I think it's timeless for me. The opener. Yeah. The first track. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I was just listening to it in the car, and I was like, yeah, that's definitely the one. But I reckon get me on another day to be different. He like um, yells at you. He yells yeah. at you in that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just remember seeing it live in like 2016 and more. I was like, wow, this is so cool. This is really good. And then if nice. I'm in a speaker, I have Lucidity. Oh, yeah. yeah that track's Great awesome. Track. Sick. Beautiful. Uh, um, Tame Impala, I got... Alter Ego is heaps good, but I'm going to go Desire B, Desire Go. Yeah, that's Ooh. good. The structure on that song is crazy. And like the riff's fairly simple. But because of the production on it, it's just so good. Um, D Maze, I think Delete's the best song. I think Lay Down, I had in my head all week. But I'm going to give a cheeky little shout out so we know. Oh, yeah. that is a good one. That's underrated, I think. Yeah, well, it's I like don't know. Maybe I, I didn't know whether it was like a big one for them or not. But like the two minutes of just like pretty delicate acoustic and then the yeah. full band, it, huge chorus to close it out. I, yeah, I it's like a second a delete, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, kind of yeah. Same I actually rate it more than more than delete. No, maybe that's because I used to flog delete really hard. Yeah, and now I listen to so we know it's like a bit different. That does happen with huge, huge singles by bands. Yeah, you tend to steer clear if you're a if you're a fan. Adam, <laughs> what do you got? Um, for Tame Impala, I was gonna go the same one as you, Sani, but I'll, I'll probably go the other one. I'll go Alter Ego. Um, this is the I love the drums on that track. They just pull you into a big trance and you can't get out of it yeah but you don't want to get out of it um and i love that track it's so good um and then for dma's probably go i'll probably just go lay down i'd say um even though it's a big single but i remember hearing that song when it was on the ep the first ep when delete came out and it's just stuck in my head ever since i always think of that track so was it on that, I'll go with that one don't think it was, was but it? i still like wasn't it i don't think it was I th- either i think this was on the ep i think it might have been play it out, i think it was yeah. played out which is like a similar like big drums oh, and damn. stuff oh well i still love lay down it's such a good <laughs> song i'll yeah. still copy I remember I, that got flogged on triple j all the time I yeah oh yeah for there's sure. not an ad like a like a, i want to say like a sporting ad like a it, gambling ad or something no. yeah afl or something do you yeah. do well like getting on the nrl soundtrack and stuff <laughs> they're all just big stadium tracks yeah they are no no one does stadium tracks anymore so they're it's like them or gang of views oh, <laughs> yeah. doing well yeah. it's a smart market yeah stadium the NRL, the NRL, the NRL, NRL market and a sport market yeah <laughs> who do Giro's tapped into that they had one ago. song to their playlist every year <laughs> yeah. but that's yeah. not a lot. especially the Newcastle Knights <laughs> Yeah, Holy no. shit! <laughs> they play some good tracks there, though. Well, I haven't been. Yeah, in a while. Guns and Roses. <laughs> no, they play, they, they play an Audio Slave song, so that's all I need. But it's the same song every time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From the early 2000s. So they can yeah. just show me how to live by Audio Slave. Do do. It's just guitar and drums, <laughs> like sweet. And then they play Silverchair tracks. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I imagine uh, that would get a run in Newcastle. Yeah, a uh, bit yeah. too much. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, love it. Uh, let's yeah. let's do let's do a fan favorite. Actually, don't know, but I like it. Band name generator. All right, we're oh, gonna make yeah. some shitty little bands from these song titles. Uh, Adam, you can go first. <laughs> okay, so this week I've gone with Alter Ego, but Alter spelt. A L T A R, like an altar at church. <laughs> uh, I've gone for another Christian group. I've already done a Christian group before, <laughs> but uh, this is a Christian rap group who also go by the name Altar Boys with Attitude. <laughs> uh, they're three ex altar boys who they tried to bring God back to the streets of Compton, Los Angeles. Uh, this is in the 90s. <laughs> They were in direct (laughs) retaliation to the music of N.W.A. (laughs) Uh, Members' names were DJ Tabernacle, MC Spirit, and Jerome the Baptist. Um, Their hits included Forgive the Police, Straight Out of Jerusalem, and Check Yourself Before You Wreck Yourself by Committing Adultery. Um, And they were all killed by a (laughs) drive-by. 
Yeah, there you go. Couple of, uh, that's alter ego. That's some serious effort. That's that's. They only that's lasted so a couple good. months. A lot of <laughs> got a deal though. A lot yeah. of our bands have been have died at the end of the story. <laughs> it's fun. Brad's, it's fun to kill them off. They don't exist. Brad's scout group. <laughs> uh, mine from Hills End. My band's called Melbourne. They're Ooh. a four-piece uh, band from Melbourne. Who would have guessed it? <laughs> who have never met each other in real life. <laughs> But they all met virtually through a Radiohead Facebook fan page for Aussies. <laughs> they formed during the first lockdown in 2020, started writing and recording music from their respective homes, contacting each other only through Zoom in the second lockdown of 2020, and last week released their debut EP titled The Novel Coronavirus during Melbourne's most recent lockdown. <laughs> oh, uh, poor guys. All of their shows to date have been live streams and they plan to <laughs> disband a- as a band and never talk to each other again after they all get the vaccine. <laughs> so, short-lived band called Melbourne. It's pretty tragic. <laughs> yeah. They got a promise to disband. Yeah, they, they don't... W- yeah, it's done. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Imagine we should start a band just called Newcastle Will. <laughs> That'd be so shit. It'd be so shit. Probably get some good Newcastle publicity, though. Yeah. yeah anyway. Maybe. All right. Uh, James, you want to go? Oh, yeah. So I have... Mine was a, a four-piece rock band called Timeless, who are like nice. a 60s, 70s kind of rip-off of like 60s, so like, like sort of think like Let It Bleed era Stones yep. kind of thing. And they're from Newcastle in the UK. And they were they were huge in the nineties, like massive, massive band in the nineties, kinda of like a English version of the Strokes, which would kind of be the Arctic Monkeys, but yeah. but more <laughs> but more like the same time as Oasis and as opposed to ripping off uh the Beatles, they were ripping off like Zeppelin uh. and they're ripping off the Rolling Stones. And they got huge everywhere, but their biggest song was a really like sort of really corny sounding like Baby I Want You like 60s 70s like (laughs) blues rock track and then they their biggest show was uh in sao paulo brazil after their (laughs) first first time they they toured there in 10 years and they had uh close to one million million close to a million people (laughs) (laughs) like every show like every show in brazil (laughs) (laughs) they must not do much down there because every time someone goes there Every person in their population goes. Yeah, you see, like, the Graham comments of, like, big come bands. To it's come to yeah. Brazil. Come to yeah. Brazil. Every single time. It's crazy. It's so yeah. funny. <laughs> so good. Uh, Reese, what do you got? All right. Two-piece pop, synth-pop duo called Desire B, Desire Go. Ooh. And their names are actually B and Go. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be shortened to just Desire? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they're together? Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> they're from they're from like parts in Europe where you wouldn't know the name of or you know. You can't say it. You can't say yeah, it. It's um a rural Ukrainian town. But they're very big <laughs> on the um eastern coast of New South Wales. It's, it's mm, predominantly nice. where they go. Yeah. Um they'll play staple hold venues every week. Main room of Cambridge. Um <laughs> Lansdowne 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 <laughs> After bands have played Like There's always Events that start at midnight Oh yeah, yeah. Do you reckon they look like This this picture of Noel Gallagher uh, <laughs> <laughs> They do They yeah. do Both was- of them Same haircut <laughs> <laughs> Like dressed like Euro trash or something like Yeah that kind Yeah of I had like Daft Punk in my head But they take the helmets off Obviously ah. <laughs> yeah. They don't need the mystery No. Nah. <laughs> Be and go Biggest track is a remix of well we were going to say all days you always know the DJ <laughs> just, <laughs> it's so random just, just a remix of that <laughs> um, that's why they're big in Australia and nowhere else yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nowhere else knows them Decent. yeah but they still live in this place in Europe they just come back regularly for Every these week. down shows yeah still got a day job <laughs> tech what? support I reckon <laughs> tech. they look like IT guys they look like Liam there <laughs> IT B IT go looks like he's kind of from the matrix yeah, yeah he's like a data analyst or something <laughs> some really like specific job that's so good I'd go watch them at <laughs> me too the crow be great one track yeah. easy gig yeah done flight back to Stard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's do two truths and a lie. Stop. Stop.
fucked. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> all right, Adam's gonna say three statements about something to do with these bands or albums or uh, musicians, whatever you will, whatever Adam's got for us. Who knows? And we got to pick the lie. There'll be two truths, one lie. Adam, Ooh. what do you got? All right, first fact. DMAs once tried to steal booze from Noel Gallagher's dressing room. Second fact, Thomas O'Dell's father is originally from Liverpool and he was also raised on the same street John Lennon was raised on. Fact three, Kevin Parker has stated that Michael Jackson's Thriller and Queens of the Stone Ages are rated R are two of his favourite albums of all time. Which one was that? What was the last one? Sorry. Uh, Kevin Parker has stated that Michael Jackson's Thriller and Rated R by Queens of the Stone Age are two of his favourite albums of all time. Hmm. Well, I know uh, Tommy's dad's a huge Everton fan, but that would make sense that he's born in Liverpool then, wouldn't it? Um, uh, isn't it? It's the same place, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Is it? Did... Yeah, yeah, Everton's in... Because Everton, Everton Liverpool is like the, the, the in... rivalry, isn't it? Oh, the yeah, derby. Right. Okay. Will, are you allowed to help us? You you don't know the answers. Do yeah, you? no, I got. No, a, Will has uh, no idea. I got okay. What was the What was the first one again? Uh, DMA's once tried to steal booze from oh. Noel Gallagher's dressing room. I'm gonna what? go that as the lie. When did no, they I play? With I can add. I can add. I can add. I can add. Debate. They that's did a whole eight, tour. Yeah, they did debate. a whole Pretty tour. Pretty sure. Man. Yeah, I think that might have been at a festival actually. Uh, that ooh. one. I thought they toured with Liam, or did they tour with Noah as well? Oh, good point. No, Noah. No. 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 Noah. 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 Noah Gallagher. The third brother. The really nice one. <laughs> no, because Kevin Parker would definitely have like a Michael Jackson. Would definitely love Thriller. That I'm sick. Yeah. That I'm awesome. I reckon, I, I reckon the lie is Noel. Well, I reckon, as you were saying, it was probably actually Liam. Yeah. And then that's, that's your little trick. He's not, you know, you're not giving anything away I there. I wouldn't have you? to steal booze from Liam. They just, just take just, it. Yeah. Just give it to him. All right, what are you guys going with? I can the lie is, is Noel. I can that's I can have to lie. We don't have to come to a consensus, do we? No, 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 no. no. Um, Keep it competition. I'm just gonna. Oh, I reckon Tommy O'Dell. No way, his dad. Same street as John Lennon. I think his dad's English. I'm gonna go with that. All right, for the spirit of competition, I will therefore go the Kevin Parker one. <laughs> okay. So, first one. DMAs did once try oh, to steal ah. booze from Noel Gallagher's dressing room. Yeah. Uh, that did happen. They were playing a festival and the drummer went in to get it. And they said in a report uh, that he never did it because he got scared <laughs> once he was in there. Um, and then the rest of the band got really angry at him because they were like, <laughs> we have free alcohol anyway. <laughs> so why are you doing that? <laughs> Our biggest hero. <laughs> anyway, so that one did happen. Um, Kevin Parker has stated that Michael Jackson's Thriller and Queens of the Stone Age rated are, are two of his favourite albums. I thought that was pretty weird. Oh, no. So, yes. Thomas O'Dell's father was not raised on the same street as John Lennon. Oh, right. I don't know who got that right. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, you got it. He was from Liverpool though, but no yeah. one near. Uh, Johnny. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty there you go. That's good. Cool. I'm happy. Cause it's, are the Beatles from Liverpool though? Yeah, John uh, yeah. John Lennon. Is, is, yeah. <laughs> I, I, the only I, people I, I knew from don't, Liverpool, don't, hence why I, I made that lie. <laughs> 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 I had no idea. <laughs> there you go. Nice wow. work, Adam. No worries. That was a good one. Good stuff. All right, let's rate these albums out of 10. Now, we rate them out of 10. We don't do decimal points, and we got to rate it out of 10 something. Adam, do you got any ideas? Should we do <laughs> out of 10 morphines for yep. GMAs? That sounds good to me. How about out of 10 alter egos? Perfect, mate. All right, sweet. Uh, James, you're going to go first. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go around and do Tame Impala, then we'll go back and do DMAs. So Tame Impala out of 10 alter egos. Yeah, it's just tough. Um, we have given out plenty of 10s, if you, if you want. I don't think it's a 10, but it's like I'm trying to think of where do I put albums that I think are better than it. And like, what do I rate them? And like, Should we come back to you? No, no, no. I reckon I'm giving it. <laughs> I'm giving it. Um, I'm gonna give it uh, nine alter egos. Wow. Yeah. Decent. I like it. Great start. Great start. Uh, Race. I'll go. I'll go eight alter egos. Okay. Adam, Decent. you can go. 
Uh, I'm also going to go eight alter egos, I think. Um, I do love this album. This is my introduction, or as a lot of people's introduction to Tame Impala was. Um, but I would, I think I put it third out of the line of really? Tame Impala records Ooh, for me. Wow. What, Currents and Lonerism? I put Lonerism first and yeah. then Currents and yeah, then this okay. one. Yeah. As, as I don't know if I would say they're favourites because Inner Speak is like a favourite of mine, but that's my that's the ranking I think mm. like which is best. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is, yeah. if I give Inner Speaker a nine, like Lonerism would be a ten for me, which would be yeah. I yeah. think that's a just yeah Lonerism's a ten to me. Yeah, I, I think that's a justifiable. Yeah, argument. There you go, eight. Yeah, I'm backing you up. I'm going eight. This album was fucking sick. It's like so, <laughs> just like first song through the whole thing is is really concise in terms of mm. the production on it is so good yeah uh, did did he he produced it all himself hey he well sure. but he didn't mix yeah. it he got he it didn't mix, but, yeah but he oh he produced himself, it yeah he yeah. sent it over to new york to get mixed yeah, yeah. The, but like he didn't have a room and shit like they recorded all. it just at like a beach house which i oh, thought that was... one in perth he, he just bought that as well did he That's yeah because so he cool. recorded it and he's like oh actually now i'm rich Buy it. <laughs> See, he had a house in LA that there was his recording studio or whatever, and it got burnt down. Oh yeah, oh, he did the I slow did rush the at fires. it. Yeah, I think all he took Stole was the gone. he took the Hoffner Whoa. base, and that was it. Yeah. No insurance. Oh, it probably was insurance. Probably. Insurance. Oh, I'm sure he had insurance. <laughs> yeah. No insurance sure on the sentimental it. value. Yeah, okay. yeah, still yeah. crazy. Yeah, that would pump, but uh, that would suck. Yeah. That yeah. sucks so much. Eight for me. Lucky he's rich. That sucks to hear about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's making me sad. God. <laughs> Let's do. I'm sure Kevin Park is fine. Yeah, yeah. he's all good now. Yeah, he's <laughs> Let's do Hills End out of ten morphines. Uh, James, I'm gonna give it seven morphines. Okay. What? Seven morphines. Yeah. Wow. What are you gonna give it? Well, if that's two less than yeah. two less egos. Okay. Any reasonings morphine? behind two less um, uh, morphines compared? To I reckon the it's um. No, I really. I guess seven sort of sounds like, you know because people were really tempted to rate sort of favourite albums quite, or like really fav- quite highly. Um, I'd say on another day, it could be an eight. I was listening to it. It doesn't seem as like, I don't know, consistent as, doesn't flow as well as Tame Impala. And I think it's got yeah. the, the tracks, like individual tracks will s- s- sort of stand out a bit more here and there. Um, like there's more sort of single power in it. Yeah. Um, but I think like for now, for example, would be, up like probably closer to a nine and i definitely think it builds on but seven for me is like still really 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 good yeah Continue. seven's yeah. well above average yeah Grace. well for the same reason like that it's all singles i want to give it a nine morphines Ooh. Wow. above in above in a speaker yeah well yeah yeah no well, definitely definitely above in a speaker for me um yeah, there's just too many tracks where the choruses are just amazing for me. Mm. That's um, a fair call. That's a fair shot. Yeah. Show. Album of singles, but that's a good thing. Decent. Decent. Adam? Uh, I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go a six on this one. Oh, shit. I do love this <laughs> album. Like, I, I love a lot of the tracks on it um, when it came out. But looking back on it, I, do, I think I like the direction they've gone in later a bit more Mm. Mm. i think i liked it when it was fresh and it came out um but now i'm kind of think it does for me it comes off a little one-dimensional at times um at some points but yeah but they've still got like massive tracks on there obviously Mm. it's got some absolute bangers but yeah i'm gonna go a six uh i'm not going six i'm going seven it's pretty pretty stock standard like I did say it's not as good as in a speaker because it it doesn't flow as well. But yeah. the singles are super strong. Like all the songs are really strong actually. And I actually really like the production. The acoustic guitar sounds really like it's mm. it's perfectly mixed behind the the uh the rock and roll guitars, the axes. But you know, yeah, it, it's it's pretty one dimensional. But yeah, a nice mm. little seven, which means in a speaker it's gotten 33 out of 40. Beaton Hills End, 29 out Oof. of 40. Oof. I wonder what Brad would have given it. In a speaker? Brad loves in a speaker. He loves in a speaker. So that I reckon like pretty high. Scenario? I reckon like a nine. He could have been a nine or a ten, I reckon, if he was here. 
Who knows? One of his favourites. We'll never know. I can't know. believe I read the room so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's no, hard to go. No, yeah, I don't worry about it. Like that's just, that's just like personal a taste. Ridiculous album. Yeah. Our brains are completely warped now because we do this every single week. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> oh, there's, know. there's been some albums that I've given really high and then I've gone back to I'm like, whoa. And then vice <laughs> versa yeah. as well. <laughs> What's yeah. the worst rating you've given? Like just I've given a, I've given a one out of ten. Whoa. Is that like someone's like Me favorite too. album and you and they no, were like, no, oh, no. That was Miley Cyrus. I'm, giving it, I'm giving this an eight. It was bangers. <laughs> it was bangers by Miley Cyrus. By Miley Cyrus. Collectively, what? we gave it a five out of thirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And the only it's only points that it got was it was funny because uh, it was en- it was entertaining. We couldn't deny that it was entertaining, but it was entertaining <laughs> for the wrong reasons. Yeah. What's the biggest like discrepancy you've had between like host and and guest? Like just. Host and guest is usually pretty close because they usually bring on good albums. Like, no, no guest is brought on like a, a fucking shit Shocker. album. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. We're all... Usually we're pretty much on the same. I've given a 10 when Adam's given a 6. Oh, wow. And then... System of a Down. A couple of 9s. I, took, I take that back though. I've now put that up way higher. Toxicity by System of a Down. Yeah. It was a 10, unfortunately. <laughs> but... Oh, well. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. Lads, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. That oh, was fun. No, thank you very much. That was yeah. fun. Yeah, that was great. Thank you very much. For y'all listening, go check out Highline, their new EP. Nice little Woo-hoo. indie rock from Sydney. Uh, mm. Next week, we got some newy boys coming on. Newy lads. Darcy and Damo <laughs> from Lamphead. Another brand new spanking band who also put out a sick EP, which you should all go listen to. Uh, yeah, boys from Lamphead coming on. We're doing Best Buds by Mum Jeans against Celebrate by Tiny Moving Parts. Got some emo. Mm-hmm. Emo punk. Lots more emo. More emo. Did you ask for it? Good. No? Well, guess what? Here it is. You're getting emo. it. <laughs> Your dogs. Hey, it's going to be an easy week of listening. That's for sure. It'll be good. I actually haven't listened to Mum Jeans ever. <laughs> what? I know they're one big song. I've tried to... Th- Fling that down your throat a billion times. Unless this week changes something, I don't think I like it. So, <laughs> Damn it. I don't know. There might be discrepancies next week then. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll wait <laughs> and good. see. But yeah, we'll, it, it could be interesting. But I, I don't want to... We'll see what Darcy and Damo say. We'll leave it for next week. <laughs> All right, Reese James, thank you so much for coming on the show. Everyone go check out Highline. Go follow us on the socials at Record Royale on all the good shit. I posted in the group. Adam, did you see? Yeah, I saw. Crazy. It's crazy. The nice. Record Royale epic Facebook well. group Royale, if you want to join that shit. Ooh. Hit us up, Hit us wow. up whenever through it. Uh, it's going to be sick. We'll see you next week with the lads from Lamphead. Reese James, farewell. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.